of the year 2022. I'm the moderator of this program, Sako Merrick, and I, I congratulate you taking time to think that you need to beef up your professional nature, your capability and abilities, so that you may exercise and get the best in 2022. So, first of all, some few announcements. Uh, this is to let you know that uh, this is our first session for the year 2022, and we are putting up the Introduction to Management Consulting program. And uh, this will be part available on our YouTube channel, on our LinkedIn channel, but also on our Facebook. So to start with, I just want to remind you that uh, for those who are studying the program for the first time, our examination for certification as professional consultant will be held on 4th June 2022. And though, therefore, it's important to get prepared. And uh, we expect you to do the first foundation exam in, by February, second intermediate exam by end of April, those are done in online. So at any time you are ready, you could just do the exam. But also the last one is the written examination, which you do uh, under supervision of an invigilator. That's the final examination. Uh, as you start the year, it is important also to consider building up your capability. And I will be with you as you register. We shall provide also mentorship support of two hours every week. Now, Having said so, I would like now to welcome you to our session this afternoon. And uh, as you're aware, this session is presented at the auspice of Institute of Management Consultant Tanzania, of which you've got two areas of skill development. The first one is the general consulting skill, which is going through the modular presentation, seven module. And then we have got an optional leadership certification program. We'll talk about practical issues in leadership rather than general issues. So we don't talk about those principles you know about, but we'll talk about some practical issues, particularly African leadership platform or African leadership uh, structure that will enable you to move through the ladders, but also as you do your consulting work, that's an important skill for you to derive uh, value addition to your client. So, as we start an introduction to management consulting, we are covering module one to three, two, 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 three. then we'll have an exam, then we'll go to module four to five, and finish with module six and seven. To start with, it is uh, important to understand what is IMCT. This is a professional organization which was established in 2017 and our law is to promote common interest and advanced theory and practice management consulting in Tanzania. We want to see a unified approach to management consulting. Uh, in doing so, we learn, we conduct forums, seminars, workshops, but also we conduct examination in the profession of management consulting. And uh, we do the examination normally in June and December each year. So as we are presenting this part of the manual, which is normally given to the registered students or candidates for purpose of building and beefing up their skills. And uh, we expect that uh, in course of you being able to finish this course, you'll be awarded a certification called Certified Management Consultant or you could be part of the Certified Leader Program if you do the optional course for that. We have a 201 tie examination scheme. We've got people called Graduate Management Consultant but also we've got certificate, Certified Management Consultant. The, the second category is for those people who've got at least two consulting assignment which has been done successful as attested by the client not attested by the consultant but is attested by the client and that's kind of our, our modular approach that we are we are using
Now, all this cause, the purpose of this is to develop knowledge and skills and uh, understanding the management consulting tool, but also to nurture both the internal and external consultants. The course covers the knowledge and skill necessary for management consulting, including some few techniques for you to be able to make effective decisions, provide competence and efficient proficiency, which are necessary for identifying and solving complex consulting situations, uh, particularly for those who are doing consulting in strategy, project management, human resource, change management, engineering, or some IT. Uh, management or even procurement but also there are many other areas in a company which you may be working with so the aim is to nurture our people so that they may be able to meet the standards provided by the International Council of Management Consultants Institute IC MCI but also the global standard so-called ISO and uh, this manual, uh, is, it complies, or this structure of the course, it complies with the Board of Knowledge requirement issued by Institute of International Council of Management Consultant Institutes. And uh, uh, based on that, we are starting now to also put up an examination scheme. Part of our examination scheme is to grasp your ability and capability, knowledge and skills on how to can you use the management consulting techniques for providing support to our clients. It builds competence and proficiency necessary for you to solve complex consulting situation. But also, typically, we are covering the nature of management consulting, the process of management consulting, but a consultant without ethical value is useless, therefore, there is a professional conduct or professional etiquette that is also uh, covered as part of our training. Now, maybe it's better for you to know what is the nature of our examinations. Typically, the final examination will contain between 150 to 200 multiple choice questions, and also you're supposed to have one written case studies. Pass mark is 75%, that is 225 points out of 300 points. Each question is given a specific weight to give a point. And that examination, which is final examination, it takes three hours. Uh, any person with university degree in any specialization who intend to be a management consultant can apply for this program. And uh, you can visit our website and get what is required for the program. And uh, regarding the assessment, there will be three levels of examination. There will be level one, which is continuous assessment number one for foundation stage. Level two, intermediate stage. And level three is the final, which is also covering the final examination. So it's expected that the, the modular, the level one, level two, will comprise of 37% of the total examination points required. And final examination will contain 62.5%. So don't worry about this, you may inquire and we'll give you the explanation. So uh, in examination, the foundation stage, you do it online, on your own time, having covered the training module. Foundation stage, you do it also, the, the intermediate stage, you also do online, which also you can do at any time you are ready to do that exam. But the final examination, we do it by going to the venue, which will be assigned to you, and you do it under supervision of an invigilator. Now, what is our coverage? Typically, the aim of this course is to cover seven modules. Now, the first module is about meaning, scope, and the purpose of management consulting. We understand what is management consulting, what is the purpose of management consulting, significant, but also the consulting process itself, the management consulting, how is it? What is the past, present, and future of management consultants? 
and also try to explain to people about consulting industry. How is it structured? Model two is on client relationship. The relationship between you and the people you are doing the work to. That's one of the areas which are very practical because most of consultants are very poor at quit. They've got knowledge, they've got capability and ability, but they've got poor laboratory. And if you miss better client relationship, you'll end up having a lot of challenges to secure better jobs. Model three is about change management. It's one of the very interesting topic. And uh, we'll talk about the approaches to change because after finishing the consulting to the client, what is next? The next is to see how the client implement what we have advised. And that's one of the tricky areas for this purpose. Module four is about culture management, the profession and the code of ethics. Very important because you need to understand the culture of different people before embarking into consulting. Being a consultant in Tanzania or Africa, you may end up working with people on the online. Nowadays, there is no much about interaction. I've done a lot of assignment online, and one of them is very expensive assignment uh, in terms of what I earned, but still the client was satisfied. Our fifth module is about consulting process. This is also a very critical topic, and uh, we talk about program diagnostic tools like uh, Michael Porter, tools like the so-called uh, Pareto analysis, tools like the sort and SOC analysis, tools like unsolved equations, etc., etc. So it's also an area which is very important. You need to have a mastery of those tools to make a difference in the consulting process. The last three but one module is consulting in specialized areas. We'll see how do you consult in strategy, including the model, models such as the so-called balance scorecard, the so-called management by objective, result-based approach. We try to look on different methods that are used in uh, strategy, but also we talk about information technology consulting, what are the areas? Financial management consulting, marketing and distribution consulting, e-business consulting, operational management, human resource, etc., etc. The last module is about how do you start up a consulting firm and how do you manage? How do you set up a consulting firm and how do you manage? Now, we believe that going through those seven modules you will have the necessary capacity, capability, and ability to deliver best result to your client. Now, to start our course, let's start with module number one. And in this, we are covering the meaning of consulting, the nature of consulting, meaning and the purpose of management consulting but also significance and uh, we'll give some introduction on consulting process but also what the future of this profession so what is management consulting uh, typically it's an advisory service normally contracted for and to provide provide to organization or to the people by a trained and qualified person who assisted in an objective related manner a client organization to identify problems, analyze problems, and recommend the solution to the problems. But sometimes also you may be called to help on the implementation if requested. So typically is an adv advisory service and you expect, since you are giving advisory service, you must be trained and qualified. Uh, we can give an example for a doctor who is consulting on, on pediatric. He needs to have some knowledge about what he's talking. So, 
consultant doctor are so many and uh, because of their capability to identify diseases to diagnose to diagnose diseases and recommend for which type of treatment a patient can go with that's what typically is talking about so consulting you're providing advisory service you're always an advisor you're not a surrogate manager you are not an implementer. You need to look at the problem. You need to analyze the problem, but also to recommend a solution. Now, on this definition, I want to put some few remarks as we are discussing. Number one, it's not about only advisory service. It's not only about identifying a problem. It's not only about analyzing a problem. And it's not only about recommending a solution. It is about adding value to the client. Adding value, because you may put up a solution and a recommendation which are not practical. They become useless to the client. Typical themes on this is to identify a problem, to analyze a problem, and to recommend a solution. Now, many times the client might tell you, now you are fit for the purpose, implement it. So, we've got these three major characteristics of a consultant. And therefore, it requires certain competences which are necessary for you to secure a better approach to this. Your knowledge might be useless when you are called to implement. You need to have some managerial skills. You need to have some relationship skills so that your client may benefit and add value to his business. Sometimes a consultant will adopt the role of a mentor, but a consultant is not a mentor. And sometimes he may be a creator, and sometimes maybe a leader. That when you are identifying a problem, you become a mentor. When you are recommending the solution, you become a creator. And when you are supporting the implementation, you become a leader. So you may be a mentor on some occasion, you may be a creator on some occasion, and also you may be a leader. So sometimes we call management consultants are company doctors. And uh, you need to be careful. Consultant and management consultants are different. Both of them are consultant. Management consultant typically is addressing the organizational problems. So the word organization must be there in any management consultant approach. Typically, the term management consultant, it originates from the medical profession. A person who is ill may seek out a consultant physician in their consulting rooms. The word consultants, it means someone who advise another person. So the consultant is an advisor but not a manager in the end of the day. He don't take up the burden of management. With some exception. If it comes to manage, it becomes outsourcing. And when a consultant takes an outsourcing contract, it should be very clear that it's not again a consulting, but is an outsourcing service or management. There are so many questions whether outsourcing is part of management consultants. But most of management consultants in the marketplace, they are offering a lot of outsourcing services. So, what is consulting? What is consulting? It is rendering of independent advice or assistance about management issues. This is typically management consulting. It including identifying and investigating the problem opportunities and to recommend actions. And sometimes help to implement those solutions. Many times consultants provide services to the business, 
to the public or to other independent people. Normally, it should be done by a very independent and qualified person because you need some skill and knowledge about to want to, want to advise, particularly on the police organization, procedure and methods, but also to recommend appropriate action and developing to implement those recommendations based on the definition given by the Institute of Management Consultants in the United States of America. So, what we want to present here is to understand the nature of management consulting. Now, there are different approaches to defining consulting. The first one is broad functional view of consulting, which we say that it is consulting is any form of providing help on content process or structure of a task, where the consultant is not responsible for doing the task self, but helping those who are. When you start doing it yourself, that is outsourcing service. A consultant is trying to change or improve the situation, but has no direct control over the implementation. Typically, there are an internal consultant and the external consultant. When you are employed in the organization to give advice, you are an internal consultant. For example, all internal auditors, mostly, they are internal consultants. And they need to, that's why definition from Institute of Internal Auditors typically states so, that this internal audit is assurance and consulting activity. Now that part of consulting, that's internal one. But also there are external consultants who are coming from outside the organization to give support on identifying a problem, analyzing a problem, recommending for a solution, and sometimes support the implementation. But also the another way of defining it is on the special professional service approach whereby management consultants become advisory service contracted for and the provided organization by specially trained and qualified person who assist in the objective and independent manner the client organization to identify management problems, analyze such problems and recommend solution to this problem and when sometimes necessarily required to help in implementation of the solution. Now, according to Institute of International Council of Management of course, consulting institutes, management consultant is provision of independent advice and the assistance about process of management to clients with management responsibility. So it separates the two. What do you mean by consultants? So different people have defined the consulting in different ways. For example, Management Consulting Association, it defined management consultants as creation of value. And that's very important. I would like this to insist. If you are new to management consulting field, the client does not want your knowledge or your buffing up approach. He wants or she wants value adding. What value to add to his business? Before consulting, what he was getting at bottom line? And after your consultants, what has it improved about? So we say that it's a creation of value for organization through improved performance and is achieved by providing objective advice and implementing business solution. It involves individuals who are self-employed employed individual or collectives who use their knowledge, experience, and analytical or problem skill solving skills to add value into a wide variety of organization and therefore to the economy as a whole within the framework of appropriate and relevant professional standard, discipline, and ethics. That is the Institute of Consultants of UK. 
Typically, another person defined it is about Matt Bullman, who said that is to try to make ownership, what is consultants, trying to make ownership of the organization problems and use research and logic to develop possible options for the way forward. Jen Lidley said is giving solution the problem that companies have. Giving solution to the problems that companies have. So many people are doing consulting, but without knowing that is what? It's consultants. Consultants is about helping organizations to get from point A to point B. Uh, and uh, perhaps without knowing at the outset where well, point A, B is and where well, point B is. That's what makes the whole journey to be more systematic and more consistent. So, management consultant or consulting is a generic term uh, to apply to those who perform or some of the typical consulting function in the field of management, in either full-time or on part-time basis. Normally, the client is any manager, administrator, or organization using the services of management consultant. In a private business, public enterprise, government agents, or elsewhere, what, what is important is do you need to understand that whether it's internal consultant or external consultant, what they're supposed to have as a skill and the capability is almost similar. Typically, consultant is equal to change. And you look on two questions. What? Problem, feasibility, change implementation, review evaluation. But also the why? Additional capacity, process skill, or another thing you can put in place for the client. Now, let's see the past, present, and future of management consultant. It all started with scientific management. Then we went to strategy boutiques. And now, today, we have got technology-enabled change. Uh, I've, 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 I've at least worked on two eras. The scientific management, I was not there. But with strategy boutique and technology-enabled change, I've been there. Now, before we proceed, please go to any source discuss the evolution of management consulting from scientific management, strategy boutique, and technology enabled change. Now, what is the purpose of consulting? Why do you need to consult? What is the purpose of management consultants? Number one, to help individual or organization to achieve the objective. An organization wants to increase profits, so the consultant will help them to achieve by giving them value-added advice. Number two, is to solve management and business problems. Sometimes I've been called to address the issue related to market study. Sometimes I've been called to address the growth. Sometimes I've been called to help the company to improve their leadership and the management skill. Number three is to help identifying and seizing, seizing new opportunities. Number four is to enhance learning. People need to get new knowledge. And lastly, is to help the implementation of changes. Sometimes there might be limited skill and knowledge about the implementation of what you recommend. And therefore, you may be called to help to implement the changes. So the first one is achieving organizational purpose and objective, the purpose of consulting. 
normally there are many goals of the organization it might be to attain to be a leader in a particular industry to obtain competitive advantage to satisfy their customer to achieve total quality and productivity corporate excellence high performance profitability etc etc companies have different purposes depending whether the company is a public company is a commercial enterprise offering public service or social organization however despite different goals there is a common denominator in consulting and that is to add value to the client organization and this value should be tangible measurable to ensure or could be confirmed with what the client is achieving in his objective or her objective depends on the company you're working with the consultant need to be aware with the so called mythological hydra that grows two heads for everyone cut off the solution we develop are often rapidly rapidly overwhelmed by pretor of new problems you give a, a solution to the client about maybe customer care but develop another next problem because they need a system to implement it the customer care process sometimes most of people they start a business in the rush then the business grows when it reaches a certain point they have no goal they have no sense of mission they have no perspective so they need a consultant to help the client to develop the vision of the future to set ambitious but realistic goals develop a strategy focus on the results what the end of it but also start to view problems and opportunities in light of longer term and more fundamental so the first purpose of management consulting is what is achieving organizational purposes and objective do you have any question please all right second part is solving management and business problem this is the most mentioned part normally we don't explain about the first one the first one is what to help organization to achieve the what purposes and objective now the second one which is common even on the definition we given to on the first or another slide it was about solving management and business problems the task of a consultant is professional assistance in identifying diagnosing and solving problems problems can be from a complaint from the client poor business results and expected loss etc now typically the term problem and the practical implications is important to be well conversed with problem should not mean mistake so a problem is not a mistake is not a failure is not shortcoming is not a missed opportunity because if you think so you have a different perspective and you need to know that when you see problem solving we need to be forward looking not backward looking but also problem can mean a situation where there is a difference or discrepancy between what is actually happening and what should be happening normally problems defined in relative terms the consultant is be concerned about this difference and aim to overcome or reduce it consultant a want against uh, accepting client perception of client perception of the problem that they face at face value because when the client present to you as a problem you say this is a problem but it might be something very different most of the client they don't distinguish between the cause and the effect if you want to solve a problem don't solve the effect if you talk about a mango tree we don't look on the mangoes to solve the problem of a tree but to look on the roots roots of the tree to solve the problems as i said 
there are different areas of consulting. So let's go to our third part. Is consultants a profession or an industry? Can we say that consulting is an, a profession or is an industry? And there are various schools of thought on that. For example, Stanley Eyman. Questioned as to whether consultants could likely call themselves a profession and set out to see if management consultant conforms to the criteria of professional conduct. Brian O'Luck claimed that consultants is an industry. Why? Because the service you need to provide the client are much broader than a personal service can offer. So that at least you see that is an industry. But let's see. But also the norm, Ellis, argued that consultants has become almost industrious in terms of his scale and his marketing. The trend towards doing implementation work for the client has broadened the consultancy away from traditional law as a profession. And someone who just offer advice. And then too, the shift from the view that the consultant should be paid for the hours, regardless of the output, to view that consultant pay should be oriented a bit towards more value added addition than the conventional law of a profession. In that we can conclude saying that consultants is both a profession but also is an industry. When the consultant start by analyzing by, by, by identifying a problem, analyzing a problem and recommending for a solution, that becomes a profession. But when a consultant is now hired to implement the recommendation, that becomes an industry. So there's no point of demarcation, but consulting is both what? A profession and an industry. But let's try to dig further and dig through this. What are the characteristics of a profession? Number one, it is always a profession is concerned about established board of knowledge. It involves training of recruits. It implies extending knowledge. It demands sense of responsibility. So it's consultants a profession. The problem is that consultants training is still conducted on ad hoc basis. Little attention is paid to professional development. That's why we come in as Institute of Management Consultants Tanzania to develop. Most of consultants do have a sense of responsibility toward their client, but this is sometimes tempered with conflict of interest, especially in the information technology sector. In order to transform consultants into respectable profession, there are a number of things we are supposed to do. There must be institutions which register both the experienced and apprentice consultant. Protection by the law of the term consultant. System of training and examination. A disciplinary body a professional journal, a professional training college. Now, those things, they can now make the consultant to graduate to be a profession. And from that regard, they, they are different organizations. For example, American Institute of Management Consultants was established in 1998. We are now establishing the Institute of Management Consultants in Tanzania. Membership is voluntary. Training and training institutions are being established. So we know that soon uh, the management consultants is said to become a profession than what? Rather than an industry. Let's try to look now on the origins of management consultants. It's typically Anglo-American. The industry started in the 19th and 20th century by leading management thinkers and businesses in the UK. The first management consultants came into being between 1870 and 1914 in the USA. But they were doing on the manufacturing law. 
But the among the pioneers include Frederick Taylor, those people study management know Charles Simpson, Samson, Lillian Gilbert, Arthur DeLitro, and Edward Booth. Both of them were Americans. So what are the main operators in the consulting industry? We have many. Most of them are consulting based firms, KPMG, Scoopers, Deloitte, you may know them. IT companies, now IT is coming up. US based consultancies like the BCG, independent consultants, actuary firms, business school based consultants. Most of universities and colleges are doing consulting now. Small consultants, sole practitioners. Now, in accountants firm, as I said, is Ernest Young, Presswater Scoopers, Deloitte and Torch, Arthur Anderson. But IT companies have got the EDS, IBM, Logica, and uh, most of them the IT consultants firm, but also they provide the other services like financial administration. You may go to the internet and get more information about this. In uh, the global, global market, many operators in the US are marking, say, Boston, Ben and Arthur. And uh, we've got small industry like the PA Consulting Group. But we've got actuary firm which makes a lot of money, like the Mesa Management Consultants, Kinsley Lord, Watson Ayat, etc., etc. But also we've got business school-based consultants. Most of university college, they use that. But we've got the small consultants. When we talk about small consultants, is any consultants which employ less than 10 people. But also we've got sole practitioner, like me and you, we may decide to be the so-called consultants. And now, sometimes we may go to the marketing and IT outsourcing as part of consultants. But also, We've got other professional groups like singers, designer, corporate advertising, executive search companies. Therefore, consultant industry has loose boundaries and the market for consultants is very big. Typically, IT industry is leading by 31% of the market share. Corporate strategy 12%. Business process 6%. Change management, 5%. Project management, 4%. Financial consultants, 3%. Product and service management, 3%. HR, marketing and communication, 36%. So the industry has a lot. But also we've got major economic sectors. Typically, consultants most approach to the financial services utilities like energy and water local and central government this is where money is now we've got a challenge there are some issues that are facing the what the consulting industry what are the challenges number one globalization things are done on the network of computers differentiation between one consultant and innovation it's going very fast. Evaluation, but also information technology. So from that perspective, consultancies need to think through much more carefully what kind of client they should take and what a sender will do so as to provide good value to the client and good financial return to the consultants. It's a balancing of the equation. The global market for management consultants is estimated at 80 billion and in Tanzania is about almost 40 million shillings. Top six consulting firms are on IT industry. I would like you to profile six consulting firms in Tanzania, you know, the top. That should be our number one assignment. What are the institutions that are offering training and knowledge about management consultants? In the UK, we have got Management Consultants Association, MCA, 
representing consultants firm. It was formed in, in 1956. In the US, you've got the Institute of Management Consultants, which you represent individuals, was founded in 1962. And we are coming up in Tanzania with the Institute of Management Consultants Tanzania to make a difference. So let's end here for today for introduction lecture. We shall continue in our next session that is 15th of January 2022 and uh, on our next session or during our next session we'll talk about management, we'll talk about the consulting process. Please don't miss it. It might add a lot of value to your knowledge base. Otherwise, I appreciate so much for your time, engagement. Please, if you've got any question, send it to us and we shall be more than pleased to address it together. Thank you.